Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarbul Feth. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, head of the Commonwealth, on the occasion of his birthday. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II extended deepest congratulations on this occasion to His Majesty the King, wishing him abundant health and happiness. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Spring Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, on the 14th anniversary of his assumption of office. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince extended deepest congratulations and greetings to His Highness the Emir of Kuwait, wishing him abundant health and happiness and his brotherly people further progress and prosperity. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Savika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, received at the Council's headquarters the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and the presence of a number of Bahraini women working in the diplomatic corps on the occasion of the Supreme Council for Women's adopting the theme of Bahraini Women's Day for the year 2020, which was dedicated to celebrating women in the field of diplomatic work, which coincides with Bahraini in celebration of the start of organized diplomatic work 51 years ago and dedicating a day for Bahraini diplomacy on January the 14th of 2020 in recognition of its achievements and the efforts of its affiliates. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty, affirmed the support the Bahraini women receives from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa led her to reach various leadership and diplomatic and decision-making positions. Her Royal Highness noted the increased representation of Bahraini women diplomats, including appointing the first female undersecretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs at the Arab level. She also stressed the important role of Bahraini embassies and diplomatic missions to highlight the advancement of national efforts in women affairs. She hailed the efforts of the Minister of Foreign Affairs during his diplomatic march to translate the royal directives, which resulted in a number of honoring achievements for Bahrain and contributed in strengthening its leadership position at the regional and international levels, especially with regard to supporting the role of the Supreme Council for Women in representing Bahraini women in regional and international forums and promoting the Bahraini model in the field of gender balance. Her Royal Highness affirmed the importance of Bahrain's commitment to international agreements and participations on women's affairs, noting the necessity for documenting the march of Bahraini women in the diplomatic corps to become a reference for their contributions and their opportunities, as well as the challenges that they were able to overcome. She noted the approach of establishing Mohammed bin Barak Al Khalifa Academy for Diplomatic Studies, expressing pride in the development of programs dedicated for developing youth diplomatic caters, which will contribute to increasing Bahraini women's participation in the diplomatic work field. For his part, the Minister of Foreign Affairs noted the efforts exerted by the SCW, led by her royal Highness the wife of His Majesty the King to accelerate Bahraini women's progress in various fields. She noted the Council's initiative to dedicate Bahraini Women's Day this year to celebrate women in the field of diplomatic work. He asserted the Ministry of Foreign Affairs' keenness on effective contribution to achieve the desired goals and highlight the outstanding achievements of Bahraini women in the diplomatic field. The Secretary General of the SCW, Halal Ansari, gave a presentation on Bahraini women's march in diplomatic work, stating that their role in the field aims to highlight success stories and their impact on women's work in the diplomatic field. With reference to the announcement by the President of the United States of America, President Donald Trump, of the Peace to Prosperity Plan, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs affirms the Kingdom's position on the Palestinian issue and its support for all efforts aimed at reaching a just and comprehensive solution to the conflict, which leads to the restoration of all the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people and the establishment of an independent Palestinian state that affords the Palestinian people the same rights enjoyed by their counterparts across the globe. 
the Ministry of Foreign Affairs commends the United States of America for its determined efforts to advance the peace process and expresses its aspiration for the parties concerned to study the plan but put forward by the U.S. and to begin direct negotiations under the auspices of the U.S. to reach an agreement that meets the aspirations of the Palestinian and Israeli people in achieving a comprehensive and just peace between them, which leads to the establishment of an independent Palestinian state and support security and peace that benefits all states in the region and their people. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, received a delegation from the Bahraini Society for Training and Development, led the honorary president of the society, Dr. Ibrahim Dosiri, where he granted the Shura chairman honorary membership for the society. As Saleh affirmed that human resources development is important to achieve sustainable development to enhance the quality of services. He praised the role of civil society institutions in enhancing human resources development and improve human capital in accordance with the requirements of the labor market. Asala hailed the role of the society and expressed appreciation for the honorary membership granted to him. Dr. Dosiri praised the support of the Shura chairman that contributes in achieving human resource development goals. The ambassador of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's Royal Highness Prince Sultan bin Ahmed Al Saud patronized the signing ceremony for the first phase of construction of the King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz Medical City. The ceremony took place in the presence of the President of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Education Dr. Majid Al Naimi, the Minister of Health Faiqa bin Saeed Al Saleh, and a number of senior officials. The agreement was signed at the Arabian Gulf University in Salmania by the Vice President and Managing Director of the Saudi Development Fund, Dr. Khalid bin Sulaiman Al Khadiri, and the President of the Arab Gulf University, Dr. Khalid bin Abdurrahman Al Ouali, to finance the construction work. The contract specified a period of 30 months for the implementation of the project to be completed by 2022. The King Abdullah Medical City Hospital will consist of 288 patient rooms, 74 clinics, 17 operating rooms, a modern lab, and a radiography center equipped with the latest technology as well as a full-fledged emergency department. During the ceremony, the Minister of Education delivered a speech in which he emphasized that the establishment of the King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz Medical City comes as a natural extension of the success achieved by the Arabian Gulf University, noting that this advanced educational medical city will constitute a qualitative addition to the facilities and the services provided there. The minister added that the establishment of this new educational medical office embodies the bonds of love and brotherhood between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. For his part, the president of the Arabian Gulf University indicated that the project went through several stages where experts dropped the technical needs of the medical city, including capacity, manpower and specializations. Uh, today, uh, alhamdulillah, we are blessed by signing the uh, agreement for financing uh, building King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz Medical City. We signed the agreement with the Saudi Fund for Development. Uh, the uh, amount of the fund is uh, 681 million Saudi riyals, which is above uh, uh, 68 uh, million dinar Bahraini. The, uh, uh, the fund is to build the hospital in the medical city, and the hospital will have about 288 uh, beds, uh, in addition to 17 uh, surgery room, operation rooms, uh, plus full radiology uh, systems and full laboratory systems, and all needed for the operation of the hospital. Under the patronage of the Council of Representatives Speaker for Zia Zainal, the digital legislation in supporting the digital economy and artificial intelligence and facing the challenges of cybercrime workshop was launched in the presence of the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowment, Dr. Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa. The workshop is organized by the General Secretariat of the Council of Representatives within the framework of the Council Speaker to provide parliamentarians with the knowledge that contribute to optimizing their legislative monitoring and 
and diplomatic duties representatives member Ali Zaid affirmed the council's support towards everything that aimed to maintain national and regional security and stability. He highlighted that this workshop aims to cope with technological advancements and enhance the national economy. He added that the workshop comes following the content of the royal speech of His Majesty the King to include the AI in the transformation towards digital economy. The workshop included a reading of the reality of digital legislation, the importance of keeping pace with artificial intelligence along with the challenges that accompany technological developments such as cybercrime and ways to address those challenges. In the presence of the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Engineer Wal bin Nasser Al Mubarak, and the CEO of Electricity and Water Authority, Iwa, Sheikh Nawaf bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, signed five contracts for a project to develop electricity transmission networks of 220 kV and 66 kV, as well as a contract for the implementation of marine and land cables in Hewar Islands. The Minister of Finance expressed thanks to Saudi Arabia for the support it provides to the kingdom in its developmental projects in various vital sectors. He noted the deep-rooted relations between the two countries' people, which contributed to making many achievements in all sectors. For his part, the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs stated that the two projects come as part of the main plan set by EWA to develop and expand electricity transmission networks in the kingdom during the era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa and with the keenness of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. This morning, uh, six contracts uh, with five Saudi, uh, six Saudi contractors in support of uh, the government of Saudi Arabia. would like to thank the leadership and the government of Saudi Arabia about funding that project. Uh, this project will uh, allow us to provide the infrastructure and uh, s uh, power supply for different areas, um, housing projects, strategic project, and Huar Island as well. Uh, for the first time, Huar Island will be linked with the with the mother island, uh, Bahrain, uh, from from power point of view, and that will improve the uh, our capacity to uh, to supply the, the island with the uh, with the power supply and uh, the future development in that area. So. Hawar will be connected with Bahrain in order to get the reliable and available electricity 24 hours. And that is a historical day for us. And I think it is very prestigious to have a, such a connection, not just in Bahrain, but in, in the region, because we are talking about uh, 25 kilometers of marine cables uh, using 66 kilovolt and uh, connecting from uh, do, uh, do, uh, Dur to Dirat al-Bahrain, from Dirat al-Bahrain to Ras al-Bar, this land cable, and then from Ras al-Bar to Hawar. And this is 25 kilometers of cabling with three circuits, of course. Now, this is, will increase the redundancy and the availability. Okay. About number of projects, that with number of contractors coming to Bahrain with 186 million BD of a total project today we have signed, which is around half a billion of US dollar. So all of this investment in the infrastructure will give a, a, a leverage to the investment in the country. This will be the first time we'll be connected to the grid. Uh, by uh, the submarine cable, which is actually quite uh, new uh, uh, type of business we are doing right now in, in Bahrain, also in Saudi Arabia. And uh, I believe this project will be in service in the list and before the end of next year, inshallah. In implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Ministry of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning in cooperation and coordination with the Representatives Council began implementing a number of developmental projects to improve services provided to citizens within the framework of joint municipal projects in the Kingdom to achieve the goals of the Comprehensive Development March led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning Engineer Azam bin Abdullah Khalaf and MP Keltam al Haiki conducted a field visit to check the projects of the first constituency in the Northern Governorate, including municipal services and infrastructure, and the project to pave in the Khil Street between the first constituency and Selman Town to facilitate traffic. 
The Minister of Labour and Social Development, Jamil Hamidan, held a press conference where he announced that the ministry has started taking administrative and technical measures to implement the decision of the cabinet regarding the unification of the date for the disbursement of five support programs for citizens, both the Ministry of Labour and Social Development and the Ministry of Housing, by providing it within a specific work mechanism to facilitate the procedures for direct government support disbursement. He noted that this decision will contribute to enhancing the efficiency and justice of support programs without any significant delay in dispersing them to their beneficiaries, which is the Social Security Allowance, the Support Program for People with Disabilities, the high price premium for families with low income, cash compensation in exchange for the removal of meat subsidies, and the housing allowance for each citizen who passed on his housing request for a period more than five years on the waiting lists. The first Deputy Speaker of the Representatives Council, Abdel Nabi Salman, and the head of the delegation of the Parliamentary Division, affirmed that the heads and representatives of parliaments in the Arab and Islamic countries agreed to intensify joint work and constructive cooperation to address the challenges facing regional countries. Salman said that during the 22nd session of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation Member States, the parliamentarians affirmed support for important and urgent issues, noting that the session witnessed agreements to issue a statement confirming the rights of the Palestinian people and rejecting the various forms of violations against them. Salman praised the cooperation and coordination shown by the legislative councils in GCC countries, stressing that it represents an extension of the strong brotherly ties between the Gulf states. Represents Salman added that the legislative authority in Bahrain is keen on maintaining brotherly and friendly ties with parliaments and legislative councils in various countries. A parliament delegation led by the first deputy speaker, Abdel Nabi Salman, participated in the 10th meeting of the Permanent Committee for Palestine in the Member States Council's Union at the Organization of Islamic Conference held in Burkina Faso. The member of the Shura Council Service Committee, member of the Parliamentary Division Delegation, Nawar al Mahmoud, asserted that the legislative authority in the Kingdom of Bahrain supports all efforts exerted to achieve the Palestinian reconciliation and to maintain the rights of the Palestinian people. Mahmoud noted that the continuation of the Israeli violations and the disrespect of all international conventions and agreements stressed the need to intensify efforts and cooperation through unifying stances at the different parliamentary gatherings. He also lauded the efforts exerted by Saudi Arabia and Egypt in adopting various initiatives to preserve national unity of the Palestinian people. Under the patronage of the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Mohammed Ntawa, the sixth Gulf Forum for Strategic Development was held, organized by the Act Smart Public Relations Consultancy. More on the support with Mohammed Youssef. The Kingdom of Bahrain hosted the sixth Gulf Forum for Strategic Development under the theme Strategic Planning for a Sustainable Development. The event aims at highlighting the importance of achieving sustainable development and the only way to achieve this goal is through strategic planning. The Sustainable Development Goals 2030, <clears throat> the 17 goals depend a lot on you know, the, addressing the poverty issue around the world. Bahrain has done a lot on this front and they are successful in that. So there is a need for an international call to work on the Sustainable Development Goals to ensure their sustainability. In our work as UNIDO, what we're trying to do is we're working mainly focusing on the economic sustainability through entrepreneurship and innovation. Bahrain has taken very strong strides into that, but there are still many, to be, many things to be done around the world. So accordingly, through our work in Bahrain, we've been able to develop our entrepreneurship programs in 52 countries around the world, and we continue to do that. The United Nations has set 17 goals to achieving sustainable development, and this forum shed light on the most important mechanisms used internationally to achieve these goals through gathering a group of experts and specialists accredited to the United Nations to exchange experiences in this field. I think this event is a good forum for a discussion, exchanging the views between the participants, between also the, the countries who are participating here. And uh, I hope uh, this discussion will come and result in a very good outcomes where we can really contribute to the strategic planning in the Gulf countries.
The forum include workshops on practical applications in the field of sustainable development presented by a number of international experts. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Youssef.